What's up, everybody? I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, and today we're going to switch things up. We were doing hauntings in different states, but today we're going to be going over the Long Island serial killer. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it's all free to do that, and it just helps the channel grow. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. So, on May 1st, 2010, a young escort named Shannon Gilbert went missing near Oak Beach, New York. Police searched in the area, but found nothing. Then, in December of that same year, the police officer took his dog on a routine training exercise just off of Oak and Gilgo Beach and came across the remains of a woman in a nearly disintegrated burlap sack. As if it wasn't shocking enough, this discovery quickly led to the uncovering of three more bodies in the same area. All strangled to death and wrapped in burlap. The victims were Maureen Bernard Barnes, age 25, an escort who advertised her services online. A struggling mother, Maureen had been working as an escort to help pay her mortgage. Originally from Connecticut, she reportedly traveled into Long Island to spend the day in New York City. On July 9, 2007, she was never seen alive again. Melissa Bartholomew, age 24, had been living in the Bronx and had been working as an escort through Craigslist. Now, we all know Craigslist. That's a pretty shady website to use to begin with. I mean, I'm pretty sure we had the Craigslist killer on there even. So, on the evening of her disappearance, July 10, 2009, she'd meet with a client and deposited $900 into her bank account. Then, beginning about a week after, she vanished. Melissa's younger sister, Amanda, received a series of vulgar, mocking, and insulting calls from Melissa's cell phone. Based upon the content, these calls were likely from Melissa's killer. Then there was Megan Waterman, age 22, went missing in June of 2010 after placing ads on Craigslist again. So another escort placing ads on Cra Craigslist. So again, imagine, you know, back in the day using Craigslist like this for those types of services, which I'm sure at some point until they, you know, caught on and got rid of all that was a thing. I don't know. Uh, I don't ever really use Craigslist because I've heard nothing but bad things about it. So anyway. Uh, she went missing in June of 2010 after placing her ad on Craigslist as an escort. Since Megan was from Maine, she had been staying in a hotel in Hopapog, New York, 15 miles from Gilgo Beach, immediately prior to her disappearance. Amber Lynn Costello, age 27, went missing on September 2, 2010. She was a prostitute and a heroin user who decided to meet with a stranger who called her several times, offered her $1,500 for her services. She got into his car. The make and model of the car was unknown and was never seen alive again as well. So it looks like that's four victims within a month's worth of time, basically. Well, considering the last one was in September, but the first three are all in a month's worth of time. The, the fourth one that they found was a few months later. It was determined that all four of the victims were murdered by the same predator, and he was subsequently dubbed the Long Island Serial Killer, or Lisk. Then a few months later, late March or early April, uh, four more bodies were discovered in other parts of the parkway, where the original victims had been found. So, right off the bat, here we go. They're, the murders are starting back up again, and, you know, I'm sure the people of New York are kind of getting worried are the police going to catch this guy uh so four more bodies were discovered in another area off the parkway where the original victims had been found police were quick quick to link these murders to lisk the long island serial killer however these victims likely weren't murdered the same way and even if they were strangled the method of their disposal was very much different rather than being wrapped in like a burlap sack you know these bodies have been completely dismembered and the victims were jessica taylor age 20, from Manhattan, New York, went missing in the early mid-July of 2003. On July 26 of 03, her naked torso chopped into pieces, missing its head and hands, were discovered a full 45 miles from Gilgo Beach in the town of Norville, New York. On May 9, 2011, the remains of Jessica's skull, a pair of hands, and forearms were found dumped in Gilgo Beach. Jessica had been working as a prostitute as well. So it sounds like this killer is taking them a few miles from his 
places where he's killing these people and using various different ways, obviously. And but Gilgo Beach keeps bring you know keep being brought up. And then there was Jane Doe, number six, on April fourth, two thousand eleven. A head right f- a- on April fourth, two thousand eleven. A head, a right foot, and hands were found. Guess again at Gilgo Beach. However, the remains were determined to have be- belonged to an unidentified victim whose body had been found November of 2000 in the same part of Menorville where Jessica Taylor had been discovered. Both victims had been disposed of in similar ways with identifying parts such as the hands and head being removed, which suggest a link, reports say, that is likely Jane Doe number 6, also worked as a prostitute. So, Baby Doe. The third body found in 2011 was that of a female toddler between one and a half to two years of age. The body was wrapped in a blanket and showed no visible signs of trauma. She was reported to be a non-Caucasian and was wearing earrings and a necklace. So, we get to Peaches. Now, Peaches, the skeletal remains found inside of a plastic bag about a mile from the baby was determined to share the, her DNA. In short, Peaches is a baby doe's mother. But Peaches hadn't always been located on the stretch of the beach. In fact, her torso had been found a mere three days or so after her death on June 28, 1997, in Hempstead Lake State Park, around 24 miles from Gilgo Beach. When her torso was found, it was noted that the victim had a tattoo of a heart-shaped peach with a bite out of it on her left side breast. Though these four victims weren't linked by police to be the original Lisk cases, all of these victims' murders predated those of Lisk, sometimes substantially. And would Lisk have gone from butchering his victims to wrapping them in burlap and laying them out? What about the reason the police started searching in the first place, the missing Shannon Gilbert? Unfortunately, the last came in a very tragic end on December 13th of 2011 when the remains of Shannon Gilbert were finally found in a marsh about a half a mile away from the original disappeared Oak Beach. Shannon had dropped her belongings and shed some of her clothing as she pushed away through the marsh, all the while going deeper into a dangerous underbrush, though Shannon had been calling 911 and banging on residents' doors, uh, screaming for help, she eventually ran into the night. It is believed that she was so intoxicated on drugs, uh, that she was no longer in touch with reality. Frightened and pushing into the frigid night, uh, Shannon became very cold. Uh, Then, as hypothermia took over, she became hot and started to uh, shed her clothing, eventually laying down and expiring. She died. Uh, While Shannon's mother does not subscribe to this theory, it's a scenario that's all too common. In 2005, teens Mike Wamsley and Janelle Hornickel called 911 multiple times over a four-hour period, begging anyone to help them. High on methamphetamine, the two got stuck in a snowstorm, but rather than stay in the warmth of their truck, which had a half a tank of gas, they fled out into the cold freezing to the death before morning. Another link to the Lisk story was a young man they called John Doe, who was also found at Gilgo Beach in 2011. Close to where the second four bodies were discovered, John Doe was a young Asian male who died from blunt force trauma. He'd likely been working as a prostitute and was wearing women's clothing at the time of his death. Experts estimated that he had been dead for between five or ten years, between 1997 and 2002. So let me know what you guys think about all of this. Uh, I'll go ahead and look for updates and maybe do a part two to this, um, just to see what all we can find out. But I wonder, why Gilgo Beach? And were all the victims murdered by the Long Island serial killer? Or is there more to this serial killer than Long Island? Let me know what you think down in the comments. And, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.